you know, <laughs> you're absolutely right. Nobody ever talks about this topic. But I'm about to tell you this. You know, this topic has been talked about. It just went over people's heads. Like, they missed it. Like, completely. They missed it. And you know how and why they missed it? Because they being mystified by people trending the trucking industry. Like, it is this it thing to do. It is the it thing to get into, you know, on a, on on the trucking aspect of people saying that there's money to be made out here. There's a bag to get out here. Oh, just go and get your CDLs, hop in the truck, and you can become an instant millionaire. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Now hold on. It's just like the, the mystique that you get when you go and buy a lottery ticket. You see all these stories of people hitting the instant millionaire off of a lottery ticket. Well, this person right here was on his last leg and he only had a dollar left in his in his in his bank account and he took that last dollar and you know what? He went and got this lottery ticket, scratched off and boom, he's an instant millionaire. And now everybody is going to that same store and buying that same ticket hoping to hit the same thing that the person that hit that millionaire. That's what it is with trucking. You got everybody that's jumping in the truck and telling everybody, hey, you know, you, you could become an instant millionaire when you get in the trucking and all your worries and all your problems will be will be done. But of course, nobody ever, ever talks about the the stress. Nobody don't talk about that. Nobody don't talk about the fact that you're in the truck 11 hours a day driving in stressful traffic traffic like let's take chicago for example when you come around 90 all that construction right there you're stuck in traffic everybody bottlenecking it's nothing it ain't no accidents or nothing like that they just you know just like to go slow around that little that little spur right there don't know why they just do and your clock is just being eaten away. Nobody ain't talk about the shippers and receivers when you get there, especially when you get to the receivers. You got to make sure you get there on time. But sometimes traffic holds you up to the point that you would get late and then you had to end up being waitlisted, maybe sometimes being charged extra just because you're late. Now you're waitlisted and charged extra. Now you got to wait. You get in the door, you still got to wait. Let's say you get there on time, right? And they get you in the door and you still got to wait. And then you don't end up leaving until after your whole hours is gone. And then now you working for a company that you can't even move the truck because you don't have PC. And the only way to move the truck is if you violate the hours. Nobody ever talks about the hours, right? You got 11 hours to drive, 14 hours on duty, right? Right? Nobody ever talks about the companies that you work for that use that 11 hours. Like that 11 hours is not yours. No, sir. No, ma'am. Nobody ever talks about that. You know, everybody likes to come in and, and, and talk about all of the, all of the good things about trucking. Or I could teach you how to how how to make money in trucking, or I can, or trucking is the best thing, you know. But nobody ever talks about the rain, the sleet, the snow, below zero. Nobody ever talks about that you sleeping in the truck and your heater just decides to conk out, and you in the middle of nowhere. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? You, you, you're in the middle of nowhere and your heater just conks out. Oh no, I hope I don't fall. But you know what though? I agree with this comment because he's he, he put a lot of emphasis on what you new drivers don't seem to understand. You know that some of you guys is not even gonna make it within your first year. 
Like, you're going to jump in the truck. You're going to think the truck is all that great. But then when you get out here by yourself and you know that you can't hit the dock, you know you can't back up, you know you can't find nowhere to park, you know you can't uh, drive well, you, you get too stressful. And eventually, you'll give it up. You'll fall back and maybe take a little bit more time to look into it. Or you'll fall back and go back to what you was doing before because you figured, hey, that's that's too much. Nobody ever talks about the accidents that you could probably get into. Little fender benders, you know, little backing incidents, probably might back into a car, back into a building, back into another truck, you know, back into uh back, back into whatever. Nobody ain't never talk about backing incidents. Nobody never talks about driving in the middle of the night you know you have to get to that 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 food distribution place because they don't unload you until the middle of the night wonder why because they got to load their own trucks during the day nobody ever talks about that nobody ever talks about going over to mclean and then you have to have a lumper you got to have a lumper fee nobody never talks about that right now, back in the day, you used to go in, pay the lumper fee or whatever, whatever. But now it's all automatic, automated. Sit in your truck, wait until you get that uh, green light. Can't leave out of there until you pay the lumper. Lumper is about $100, $200, $300, 400 Now, mind you, the company pays that, you know, but you got to make sure you got to put it on the paperwork so that you can you know get reimbursed for it because they're gonna put it on your check and then they're gonna take it out of your check now if you don't put that receipt on the check you're hit for it maybe you can you know explain you probably lost the receipt or whatever the case but just make sure you put it on there mclean and other food distribution places are notorious for holding drivers like literally holding drivers you're going to be at some places for like eight hours four hours six hours and you only have like what maybe like 10 pallets five pallets gotta wait for them to count it gotta wait for them to break it down gotta wait for them to unload it and all of that is wasting your time and then let's say your time is wasted. Nobody ever, nobody never talks about the detention, depending on the companies that you're driving for. You gotta fight for your detention pay. That's extra money that you're not getting because that company says, oh, well, he was a minute late. Oh, he was two minutes late. Oh, he was five minutes late. We're, we're not gonna give him that detention pay, but we're gonna make sure that he waits until we get finished and not get paid at all it's not all about the big checks it's not all about traveling to exciting places vegas miami new york etc florida los angeles and the, and, and you want to and you want to know something you want to know the truth those areas that i mentioned you really don't want to go there in the truck Try to go to places like Miami. I go down to Florida all the time. All the time. You get close to Miami, close to the end of that border right there, there ain't nowhere to park. What? Ain't nowhere to park. If you don't get there by like two o'clock in the evening, ain't nowhere to park after that. You got to double back about an hour outside of Miami to get back on the Florida Turnpike to get up there to the uh, way, uh, rest area to park. And hopefully there's some spots there. Los Angeles, you really want to go to Los Angeles in the truck? California speed limit is 50 freaking five, bruh. You really want to go to Los Angeles in the truck? Nevada, I mean, uh, uh, Las Vegas, 
Now, there's some places outside, but if you want to hit that strip, you won't be able to park on the strip. Probably might park at that Petro or or the Loves that's about two, about an hour, hour and a half out from the strip. And even if you even if you do get down to them key places, New York, especially New York, you don't want to go up in the Northeast as a new driver. Trust me, new driver, you do not want none of that up there the best way to do the northeast to get up there at night which you're not going to see nothing and the best way to get out is at night when you're not going to see nothing so if you think you're going to go up there and be like oh well i'm about to travel up to new york i've never been to new york before i never been to new york either i mean i've been to new york but in your case i've never been to new york in a truck when I got up to New York in the truck, luckily for me, I was at a distribution center and I was able to park there. See, that's another thing. Nobody ain't talking about the parking. Parking. You got what you got West areas that's not even allowed us to park no more. Walmart don't even allow us to park no more. We can't park on the shoulders. Why? Because it's too freaking dangerous. Our favorite Korean's getting robbed right now. You serious? First he tells me his wife has the flu. Aw, oh, man, that bitch would work if she was dead. Then he gives me the coffee for free. Shit. He is getting robbed. How do you want to play it? It's too freaking dangerous to park on the shoulder. There's nowhere to park. You can't park at the shippers and receivers. Hey, uh, I'm out of hours, so. Now you got a PC. Now you're, you're like, in violation but you're not in violation because if you don't put the information right in the notes ain't no telling that that jack leg dot officer will be in his feelings oh you pc for about an hour hour and a half that means you're you uh advanced the load an hour hour and a half but i was looking for some place to uh park sir Oh, all these, all, all these uh, truck stops that you passing, not now one of them had a place to park. Come on, sir. There, there was a place to park there. There was at least one spot. No, sir. You checked all of them. Ain't no spots available. Oh well, that's not my fault. And you want to know the trope that they're gonna use? Well, sir, you should have planned better. Plan better. Nobody talks about that planning better bro it's four o'clock in the morning when i get up i do my pre-trip post-trip post-trip <laughs> at four o'clock in the morning i do my pre-trip at four o'clock in the morning make sure everything is good make sure that the lights on make sure that i'm getting ready for the day you don't know the outcome of the day this is trucking and i say it all the time anything anything can happen in trucking anything traffic construction accidents uh detours all that stuff you can't plan for that you can't plan for that you look on google maps google maps tell you oh it's straight you know five hours that's that's five hours without traffic, sir. That's five hours without traffic. So when people come and tell you, hey, maybe you should plan better. You can throw all that planning better out of the out of the window. And yes, you do got some drivers be like, well, yeah, you know, I reserve parking and and I know where I'm going to be at at the end of the night. No, you don't. No, you don't. You can estimate where you're going to be at, at the end of the night, but you don't know if you're going to actually be there at the end of the night. You don't know if your reserve parking is going to be there at the end of the night. That's why I always tell you guys, do not reserve parking until you actually get there. You can, here's the best tip I can get you when it comes to parking, especially at pilot, because you know they got reserved parking so let's say they got like 50 spaces right and 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 well they got like 40 space well they got 
50, they got 50 spaces with 10 reserved parking. Look at the reserved parking side on that app. And if you see one spot left, two spot left, three spot left, then that pretty much give you an indication that that parking lot is full. Now, let's say, for example, you get to a, a reserved parking that got like 200 spots, right? And the reserved parking is like 90 of those spots. Now, if you see anywhere from like maybe 30 of those spots or maybe maybe 20 of those spots that's 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 already reserved then that pretty much gives you an idea that 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 there's some more parking left at that particular pilot right that's how i use it i i, I you know i i kind of figured it out and kind of pinpointed to figure that if all of the reserved parking spots are full or taken that means that parking lot is full and then I try to go somewhere else where there's reserved parking. It's not as full. And that gives me an idea that it might be some parking left. If not, I know that there is some reserved parking for me so that when I get there, I can pay for a spot when I get there. It's not about the big paychecks. I said that before, man. It's not about that, man. But again, nobody don't no nobody don't want to hear it. Nobody don't listen. Nobody don't catch it. We talk about it all the time. It's been talked about. It's been talked about. You know, nobody ever talks about sitting on the side of the road. It's been talked about, sir. I I talked about that. I sat on the side of the road for maybe a couple of hours waiting for a breakdown to come and and repair a tire or repair whatever the issue that I might have on the side of the road. Luckily for me, I work for a company that takes pride in their trucks and they make sure that their trucks stay running. That's another thing that people don't tell you about. They tell you about come out here and get the bag, get the bag, but they don't they don't tell you about well when that truck breaks down, that bag ain't being got. There was a TikToker that sat on the road for seven hours for an inside tire that was flat. Seven hours. But nobody talks about that because that's seven hours that you're not getting paid. Seven hours that you're not getting back on your clock. Your clock is done. Your clock is done after seven hours. What you gonna do? Drive for an hour? You're done. Nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about the fact that when you on the side of the road, depending on where you at and how long it's gonna take a breakdown to get to you, depending on your breakdown status. Again, if it's a uh, outside ty uh, tire on a truck, I can understand not moving. But if it's an inside tire on a truck, it is a chance that you can probably limp maybe a couple of miles to the exit, get off the highway, number one. Good man. Uh, double espresso macchiato with extra foam. Sure, that'll be 450. You know, once you're off the highway, you're you're semi safe okay and then number two you can get to the truck stop that has a repair spot and you might just be able to get your tire repaired and get back on the road nobody talks about that but i talks about it but it goes over people's heads they don't hear it the people in the back don't hear it the people in the back only hear the fact that they want to get out here because trucking is trendy right Again, I, I mentioned about I mentioned about the weather, the bad weather. Yeah, I did it, you know. Snow, sleet, ice, black ice. Down in Texas, being on black ice, damn near slid off the highway. Had to get out and throw chains on. Nobody ain't talk about that. Snow chains. Damn, like I what is that? No, that's uh that's snow chains. You gotta get out and slap some chains on your on your tires in order to get through get through the uh get through get down the road and in some states you need that some states is mandated chain states you can't go through you can't go through that state if you don't have no chains on your truck now that does not necessarily mean that you have to use the chains but you definitely have to have chains on the truck to be legal 
Nobody tells you about that. Nobody tells you about when it is a huge snowstorm and I-80 just happened to shut down and there you is stuck on I-80 because of a because of us a, a snowstorm or ice storm. Nobody ain't tell you about that. I'm telling you now, but it's still going over your head because you're thinking, oh, I'm not going to go up in those areas. I'm not going to go up in Colorado. I'm not going to go up in uh, Utah or Montana. I'm not going to go up in the cold states. No, pff, this trucking. You, you going to go where the load takes you. Or if you're a company driver, you're going to go where the load is dispatched to you. I don't like Chicago, but I, I always end up there. Always. I, I hate Chicago. Not only that, I'm beginning to hate Miami, but I always go. Who am I to tell my boss be like, no, I don't want to go there. Oh, okay. I could tell him the situation and then maybe next time I might not be dispatched on taking the load there but what you gonna do you 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 don't own the truck you well, it, well that's a whole different topic but nobody ain't gonna tell you that when you get out here and trucking you're gonna miss your father's your, your your stepfather's funeral nobody ain't nobody ain't gonna tell you that even when you give your fleet manager Amplable time to get you home for your stepfather's funeral. Only to be stuck in Chicago on the way back. Nobody ain't gonna tell you, nobody ain't gonna tell you, or nobody ain't talking about the fact that you're gonna miss your sons or daughters bar mitzvah, your sons or daughters football game, basketball game your kid's birthday you're gonna you're gonna be on a zoom call or on a or on facetime with your son or daughter wishing them a happy birthday wishing that you could be there but this is trucking unfortunate situations happen that force you not to be there think about that think about that nobody ain't talking about all of the unhealthy Foods out here. Every freaking truck stop has a freaking Arby's, McDonald's, a Carl's Jr., or or Hardee's, and ain't none of that food in there is good for you. But it's expensive as fuck. A combo meal is damn near ten dollars. The fries are stale. The burger is stiff, and the and the drink is watered down. But what can you do though? Because that's 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 the available that's that's the available options. Yeah, you can get a truck that has a refrigerator. Yeah, you can go to Walmart, but which Walmarts can you go to because you can't park in the parking lot? You go in the parking lot and you come back to this. Now, not only that you spent X amount of dollars in the Walmart, now you got to spend X amount of dollars to get the boot off. These trucks right here, they probably went in there to do their little shopping or whatever, whatever. Didn't expect to come back out to a five, six, seven, eight hundred dollar boot. That's like what? Four or five trucks right there that y'all just seen in that little clip. Four or five trucks. Whoever booted that, whoever booted them just made off like a fat rat. Now there's ways to get around all of that stuff, but still, you went into Walmart just to buy some food, some healthy items. You don't want to eat all this hard stuff out here. 
tell, even Subway is expensive. The protein bowl, $12. $12 for some lettuce, onions, green peppers, and some chicken. $12. It might be different at different places, but yeah. Now, I know you can say you can save money just by going and get you a lettuce bag, uh, an onion, a tomato, and, and some green peppers. Chop that stuff up. Make a meal prep. Bam, bam, boom. You're done. But what if but what if you, you ate all of that and ain't nothing else in your refrigerator? Then what? Then what? The only sit-down restaurant, quote-unquote, uh, meal prep restaurant is Denny's. If there's not a Denny's around, then pff, that's it. The Country Pride, majority of them is closed. Iron Skillet, they food sucks. That's my opinion. Ain't no home, ain't no mom and pop, ain't no, no country buffet at these truck stops, man. Even with these, even with these newer truck stops that's being that's being built they're not being built with sit down cafes sit down restaurants only a handful that's still out here there's a in virginia there's a uh what's that uh it's a buffet in the pilot over there i forgot the name of it oh golden corral yeah and that uh there's a pilot up the way that has uh, a Quaker steak and lube in there. Good food in there, by the way. But that's but that's far and few in between, though. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know. This is, excuse me, a damn fine cup of coffee. I've had, I can't tell you how many cups of coffee in my life, and this, this is one of the best. Far and few in between. And before I get up out of here, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you guys is listening to this rant. I ain't mean, I, I did not mean for this rant to go on this long, but it's, it's, it, you guys need to hear this. You need to share this so that other people can hear so that the people in the back can hear that trucking is not all that cracked up to be trucking companies is closing every day mega carriers that has a hundred years in in trucking up all of a sudden closed down file bankruptcy Twenty thousand there truck drivers is on the street looking to start all over again and last but not least, like I said about the parking, ain't nowhere to park. There, it's more of these, as more, as more and more trucks come out on the road, there's less and less place to park. And the places that we can park at, a lot of us common denominator truck drivers is messing that up. We used to park in Walmart parking lots, but we got tired of of truck drivers leaving mess behind in our parking lots. And, and in order to alleviate that, we don't want y'all parking in our parking lot no more. A lot of, a lot of trucking, uh, a lot of truck stops, you know, you drivers are saying, oh man, they making us pay. We do, why we have to pay? We shouldn't have to pay. Well, stop messing up the uh, parking lot and maybe you might not have to. They gotta pay them people to come out there and clean it. They, you, what, you think they're going to clean it for free because you feel entitled that you don't think you got to pay because you're a truck driver? Well, stop throwing food, mess, garbage out of your window and maybe you might not have to pay. We are our own worst enemies out here, bro. A lot of the stuff that y'all complain about is a lot of the stuff that you guys actually do. Yeah. <laughs> you guys actually do it. But y'all complain, y'all be the biggest ones complaining about it. Oh, we gotta park, we gotta pay to park. Well, 
You wouldn't have to pay to park if you wasn't messing up the places where you was parking at. Oh, now you can only stay two hours at a rest area. Why? Because they're tired of coming out there cleaning up after you. Grown ass men and women. So just think about it. You know, just just think about what I just said. And yes, 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 I am out here talking about it. Big G's got it locked. Boy. Want you to love me all night, yeah, take me down. Want you to make me real wet, yeah, swimming around. Want you to take it like a G, yeah, don't make a sound.